name is uh, Jason J. Rock Houston, and you're listening to Chaotic Risk Magazine. We can be found on the web at www.chaoticrisk.com. Our special guest tonight is um, Act of Defiance uh, guitarist Chris Broderick. How are you doing tonight, Chris? Doing really good. Thank you. Um, Thanks for having me on your show. Yeah, sure. It's a great pleasure to be talking to you now. Um, like a lot of people, I first um, became aware of you, Chris, of course, when you joined up with um, Megadeth. Now, I was curious, before you joined the band, were you much of a Megadeth fan? Oh, okay, you know, wow. Super into the, the shredders and his playing. And, yeah. You know, so I followed him from Cacophony into Megadeth. And, you know, it's kind of interesting because um, Megadeth, very much like Ozzy Osbourne, um, um, Dave has, already, uh, has always had a great eye for picking, like, great lead players. Now, but um, I was doing a little research and I found out it was actually um, Sean Drover who um, kind of recommended you to um, Dave Mustaine. Did you guys know each other before um, Megadeth? Oh, okay. Billy G knew of me through my work with Nevermore, and uh, he had a, a, a very high recommendation of me as well. And so um, I was curious, when you went down to audition for Megadeth, um, did you know a lot of those songs, or, um, you know, what was the audition process uh, like? Um, um, did you feel like uh, when you went in that you um, knew the bulk of that material? No, not at all. <laughs> um, I basically knew uh, Holy Wars because I knew they ended every you know, show with Holy Wars. Yeah, okay, and okay. So, and so that's what I what I went in with. And the, the initial meetings were actually just to have me play and then, uh, you know, for us to talk and chat. And yeah, stuff yeah. Like that. Well, yeah. well, you know, what, what, a, um, what, what a great band to join up with. Now, um, I, I was also doing some research, Chris, and I, um, I, I, I see that you, um, in addition to playing guitar, but early on you also play the, the keyboards and um, I, I believe violin even um, and that you're even um, very much into classical um, music and I, I believe you had a degree in classical music is that correct? Correct yeah I got a, a bachelor's in classical guitar performance at the University of Denver and the Lamont School of Music. Yeah yeah and, and of course we've talked a little bit about Megadeth because like I said a lot of people know you from that and then after about seven years um, you made that decision that it was time for you to leave. Um, talk a little bit about you know um, you know, how, how you came to the decision, were you just um, like, I'm ready to do my own thing, or it's time to move on? Um, yeah, it was really just about being able to express myself the way that I wanted to, you know, both musically and uh, just in every aspect of being in a band, you know, being a part of it. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that was the, the big decision in and why I left. Yeah, and, but uh, we're going to get ready to get a little bit more into um, talking about active defiance. Before we do that, I was curious. Um, you mentioned Marty Friedman being one of your guitar heroes, but um, who were some of the other guys um, that influenced you growing up, that, you know, made you want to kind of pick up the guitar and do what you're do doing? Right. Well, of course, right along with Marty was uh, Jason Becker, who wow. is one of my biggest influences both on and off the guitar. And uh, then uh, I would also mention people like Paul Gilbert, Tony McAlpin, wow, wow. Vinnie Moore, you know, every shredder that, yeah. that came out during that time, I just loved, it was just, I couldn't get enough of that stuff. Now let me ask you, Chris, in that regard, um, when you made the decision to leave Megadeth initially, I was curious, or um, would you even later, um, you know, um, have any interest in ever releasing, like, did you ever think about, okay, I'm leaving Megadeth, I'm going to do one of those guitar shredder type albums? Um, I have, but you know, and, and I definitely plan on doing that, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, my initial thing was to release songs and, and music that, you know, I think a lot of people that, that knew my work yeah, yeah, were yeah. going to be into, you know? And, and, and like, I, I love solo guitar and I love yeah. solo guitar albums, oh, yeah. but uh, I, yeah. thought, I thought it would be best to start off in, the, in you know, in the band world. Yeah, and, and I think it's a very smart move because, um, I, I agree with you to the point that I, I love. I, I myself grew up with a lot of those guitar shredder type albums, and and it's great for what it is. But um, I've always been a fan. I much prefer um, music with vocals for the simple fact that, that um, unless you got a you know, a lot, a lot of times those albums they, they sound like the same ten songs. But um, so I um, 
Now, when you, you left Megadeth also, you, you were the one that first announced you were leaving. How surprised were you the same day when you, a couple hours later, you learned that Sean Drover also um, announced he was leaving? Well, it was actually the opposite of that. Oh, okay. Sean announced, yeah, Sean announced before I did okay. that he was leaving, and then I announced I was leaving, and it was it was solely on the idea that, you know what, Dave, for me, it was a long time coming. Yeah, yeah. And I just thought... Sean had the right idea, you know, he, he made the right choice because Dave was talking uh-huh. Let me see if I can get somewhere else out of Sure, sure. Alright, you done? Uh, yeah. Maybe. Alright. So, so uh, I had thought that, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was obvious at the time it was right to leave because Dave was calling us down to, to work on the next CD yeah. and, you know all that stuff so it was like yeah, I didn't want to start another CD if I knew my heart wasn't in it that's smart move smart move and um, um, so once you know you and Sean left this very same day was it um, did it immediately come to your mind hey let's um, two of us um, do something together or what was that process like no it was really more of us uh, you know kind of like talking after we both left and I was like, well, you know what? Well, we really want to get out our music, so yeah, let's make it happen. Let's do a band. And, 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 and I did. love the name Act of Defiance. How did you guys come up with that? I mean, great, great name right off the bat. Because I know that's one of the hardest <laughs> things you know to do when you when you're forming a band. Right. Well, for me, I mean, it was simply we, we all knew we liked the name Defiance. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and uh, but uh, you know, it was like. Well, everybody is named Defiance, so yeah, yeah, yeah. we wanted to think of some cool term to uh, to kind of expand on the idea. Yeah, now it's a, you know, it's a very metal sounding name now. You know, of course, um, the obvious thing you guys could have done is, okay, two former members of Megadeth are going to form a band together, we're going to, and a lot of fans would expect that you're going to be like, um, you know, for Megadeth uh, Part 2, or so to speak, but I, I dig the fact that um, you guys really went in there and created your own original sound, uh, you know, and, and I think that's a very smart move on your part. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that was, you know, the, the, the basis for us moving on was really so that we could write the music that we really loved, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I imagine part of being in Megadeth, too, I mean, I mean, most fans know that the one um, constant in Megadeth has been, um, Dave Mustaine, and of course him being the lead singer and the front man from day one, uh, you know, a lot of things have to go through him, so um, with Act of Defiance, that must be a great feeling that, hey, we can go in there, we can uh, create whatever we want to create, we can, uh, you know, we kind of have to say what ends up on the album, and, and we get to make the decision, that's got to be a great feeling. That's exactly it. Yeah. yeah. We have total, you know, we have uh, definitely equal say in, in the direction of where this band goes. Yeah, and you guys, um, I know are currently on um, tour with um, Armored Saint. Um, that, that's a great bill. How did how did the idea for that tour come about? Um, well, we're all good friends with the guys in Armored Saint, and uh, we happen to have the same booking agent as well. Oh, wow, wow. So, yeah, that worked out really well. And, and I heard they're doing um, their, their classic album, um, uh, S- salvation uh, um, in its entirety. That's a great thing. Symbol of, Symbol of salvation. Symbol of salvation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, <laughs> you guys are on one of the greatest summer tours. So I, I, I hope that this really helps lift your guys' um, profile. Not that you really need any help, but um, it gets your name out there a little more. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, and um, so you guys have released um, the last album came out in 2017. So I imagine you're still. Um, Currently touring and working behind that album, but have you given any thoughts to the next album or um, when when we might see that? Uh, no, not yet. We're really trying to, to push, uh, push yeah, cycle this mm-hmm. album really well and make sure that people know about it. And yeah, you know, I think we're still really proud of what we've done on this the second release. So yeah, what was that progression like going from you know the first um, first album to the current album? I mean, um, I imagine on the first album a lot of it was. Um, you know, you and Sean initially getting together and writing a lot of his stuff, whereas probably um, on the most recent album, it's more of a band effort than it was on the um, first album. Would that be correct? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was such a shotgun wedding on the first album. You know, we yeah. didn't really know 
Henry at all, and you know we'd met Matt a few times, but we didn't know how he was going to be. So uh-huh. by the time by the time we uh, hit Old Scar's new wounds, it was like you know we were a band, and we you know we knew each other's quirks and how each other wrote. And it was great. So it was very collaborative, and um, you know a lot of different opinions coming in, and you know. If it was a song structure that yeah. needed to be changed, or somebody had an opinion about that, we yeah. looked at that, you know. So it was awesome. And I was curious when you guys went in to record the first album, um, were these tunes that are, were all like freshly written for Act of Defiance, or were any of these ideas ever presented for Megadeth and got turned down? Um, on Old Scar's New Wounds, all of them were written for Act of Defiance. Oh, cool, cool. Okay, and. Um, yeah. And, and and I was curious now. Obviously, you and Sean having worked together um, all these years, you got a certain level of comfort between the two of you. Now, um, when it came time to make the um, most recent album, um, and you have the two two new guys in the band, and you've been touring with them the last couple of years, um, like you said, there's much more of a band um, band effort. Did did you have any trouble like um, kind of not being so much in control and allowing them to kind of present their ideas, or where it's a more collaborative effort? Well, it's funny because, you know, we don't always agree. Um, yeah, yeah. There's, there's one song in, uh, I think it was, I think it was The Talisman on Old Scars New Wounds, uh-huh. where Henry and I, when we were retracting Henry's vocals, had thought that it would be better if the verse was sung clean. Yeah. And so we sung it that way, and then I also had him do an alternate uh, heavy track on it just to see how that was uh-huh. and uh, we were totally sold on the clean version and then when Sean and Matt had heard it they were both like no nah, it's got to be the heavy version <laughs> and and uh, so I didn't agree with that at all yeah. but ultimately because Matt um, had written that particular the music to that particular yeah. song that I kind of gave him the uh, trump card in that sense you know wow wow well, and um now I was curious, like you said, for example, t- talking about this one song, you have a clean version, and and that. Um, do you guys, when you go and record, you save um, all your recordings, so like maybe you could re- release like an alternate version or something one day? Um, I, we definitely don't have that plan. That's yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, it wouldn't be a bad idea. I know a lot of bands they, they go and they, they they end up like having a lot of recordings left over, and they just kind of have a vault or whatever where they leave all that stuff for um, maybe future use. Um, and speaking right. of that. Um, when you guys go into record, do you record like a lot of songs that don't make it onto the album, or do you typically just go in and um, say, okay, these are the ten or twelve tracks that are going to be on the album. This is what we're going to work on. Um, I think you know, for the most part, we we tend to write basically. I mean, I, there are tons of ideas that uh, I start to develop. Yeah. That I'm like, nah, I'm gonna, I'm going to keep working on this at a later point or whatever. But for the most part, once a song has reached a song format uh-huh. where you've got you know verses and choruses and leads and bridges and all of that stuff and, and Chris when you when you write it's a song do you typically now. start like with um, you know a guitar riff where you're riffing around or um, does, a lot of times you start with the lyrics um, usually it's with the guitar yeah yeah, yeah 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 and um, and so I, I was I, I was curious um, like um, when you guys go into record do you do old school way where everybody's in the same room together? Or do you kind of, um, everybody goes in and records separately and you, and you piece it all together? Yeah, it's, it's pretty much the newer way just because, you know, Sean lives in Atlanta, Matt is in uh, oh, wow. Southampton, Massachusetts, you know. So you guys uh, are all Henry spread- and I will, will record together, but usually it's, you know, me tracking Henry yeah. or, um, you know, so it is pretty separate. Yeah, see, that, that's the beauty of, you know, technology today, that you, you have the power to do that. I mean, back in the day, do you think that's part of the reason you guys have uh, get along so well, that you're not necessarily hanging out all the time, except when you're touring and that, you kind of come together, and you, you look that w- much more forward to seeing each other? Can you, uh, can you say that again? Yeah, I was saying, um, you know, back in the days, a lot of bands, they all lived, like, right down the street from each other. You'd see each other every day, practically. But um, right. technology being what it is, it gives, it gives you that power. Um, do you think part of the reason you guys get along so well is because you're not always seeing each other every day? Do you only maybe when you go into a record or get ready for a tour or you know do a show you guys see each other? Um, I don't know. I would say that could be part of it, you know. But yeah. it's it's just like any relationship, you know. We yeah. uh, we we're all different people, and uh, yeah. we, I think we're just mature enough to realize that you know to make this work, you have to compromise. 
Yeah, yeah. And um, how would you say, um, how do you feel um, that the fans have accepted Act of Defiance? I mean, since the first release, you... Um, because again, I don't. Um, when I read stuff about the band, I don't feel like you guys are li um, living off the coattails of Megadeth. Or you're just kind of um, doing what you're doing. It seems like fans are pretty accepting of it. Yeah, I, that's kind of been our, uh, you know, one thing we've wanted. You know, to the point of, you know, talking to um, uh, promoters and venue owners and mm -hmm. stuff like that about when they advertise for our shows. You know, a lot of them were like, "Oh, can we put?" Chris Broderick and Sean Trover yeah, yeah, yeah. of Megadeth. Yeah. We're like, no, you can put Chris Broderick and Sean Drover, but don't, you know, we don't need to, we don't need to mention Megadeth to be worth anything. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know. I mean, you, you in your own right have done a lot of other things besides Megadeth. Like you mentioned, you were in Jack Pazner. You, you were also in um, Nevermore. So, I mean, um, those, are, those are great things to be proud of, but, you know, you're trying to stamp out, um, you know, name for act of defiance. And, and I think you guys really are at the point you don't need to be doing that. People, people come to see Act of Defiance, you know, they know who's in the band, I think. Yep, and, and, exactly. And, and you know, um, going back to Megadeth just for a minute, um, you also were part, um, you got to take part in some of those um, Big Four shows. What was that like? <laughs> I mean, it's everything you would expect it would be. You know, when you, when you play Warsaw Poland and there's uh, 110,000 people there. Yeah, yeah. And, it's beyond what you can see and you can just feel the roar. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty intense. And and also to be so welcomed by Metallica, you know, who was so gracious to put it together was yeah. awesome. Yeah, and, and you know, um, the only reason I bring that up is because, you know, it, it's great that you, you've had the opportunity, um, Chris, to, you know, uh, get great opportunities like, you know, to be, be part of a big four and then um, you're doing what you're doing now. And, and like I said, um, I think any, anybody going to see Act of Defiance, they know who Chris um, Broderick is. And, and let me ask you, um, what do you think about the guy um, that they picked to replace you in Megadeth, um, Kiko Larrero? I mean, he's, he's um, I, I knew of him, I knew of him before, but I think, um, but one thing about this again is, um, he's, more people are going to know who this guy is, um, and he's, I think he's really added something to the Megadeth sound. Yeah, I think he's, I like Kiko, I think he's a good dude, and uh, he's a great player. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, you guys, are, how long is this tour with um, Armored Saint going to go for? Uh, well, it depends on how you think. Cause we uh, go on tour with them up until like the 22nd, and then we head over to Europe, and then we actually do a few shows with them over there. Uh -huh. And then we kind of split up again, and then we be back again on the West Coast uh, in uh, late, mid to late August, and do a few more shows with them there. So, you could say seven weeks, but with breaks. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, and then, um, uh, have you guys played over there um, in Europe? Because I'm told that, you know, the European metal fans, they're really um, quite different from, I mean, uh, the American audience. I mean, um, I understand European fans, they just, they love their, they love their metal bands and they're really supportive of them. Right. They are. Yeah. They're, they're, you know, the thing is, is they, they love metal and they just accept, you know, they accept that. But at the same time, they're super educated you know when they like a band they know everything about the band you know it's not a passive kind of like oh yeah i listen to metal it's like okay now i'm going to metal school or something yeah yeah know? yeah yeah and um you know but that's the one thing as great as technology is i mean um, um i miss the days of going to buy like actual um cds most, most time when i um, order any kind of music i got to do it online these days but again i think if you're a big enough fan of somebody if you have to go buy the latest Act of Defiance CD, you know, through the band's website, you'll, you know, you'll do that. I mean, uh, it's very sad. I recently went in um, Best Buy and was just going to check out some of the new releases. The guy told me, oh, Best Buy, we no longer sell um, CDs. I'm like, that's, that's very sad. <laughs> I mean, we're, I, I'm talking to you, you know, from Los Angeles. Um, used to be the rock capital of the world. I mean, um, they, don't, they have a lot more record stores, you know, like we're saying, um, in Europe, for example, than they do in Hollywood or Los Angeles. Very sad, you know, these days. I miss seeing all the great artwork and all that. But um, you know, but, but it is what it is. And, and if you if you love your band, you'll do whatever you have to uh, do to um, support the band. Yeah, I, I agree. But you know, it's it's not up to me. It's no, no. up to the general music buying public. So yeah. I, I hope they see it your way. But yeah. um, I mean, it's funny because so, even. Yeah. And it's funny because even um, 
e even um, vinyl is kind of making a comeback, and it's very funny because a lot of people living on turntables are just buying it for the collector's um, value, you know? Yeah. Y yeah, and. I'm sorry, I, did, I didn't get the question. Oh, I, I was saying, um, it's funny, vinyl seems to be making a comeback, even though a lot of people no longer have turntables. I've had a friend tell me, oh, yeah, I bought the. I got this on vi uh, vinyl, you know, Kiss Alive too, but I don't have a turntable. Just, it, it's very funny um, the, the um, way people's purchasing their music. I mean, um, yeah. and, and I'm going to end on this note, Chris, because I know you're very busy, but um, do you, um, you know, what motivates you guys? Because, like, we're talking about people don't buy music like they used to, and that's why I have a great respect for bands that do what you guys do. You continue to put out new music, because a lot of bands are just like, you know, we got two or three albums. We're just going to live on our catalog of music. Nobody's buying CDs, so I'm glad that you guys are doing that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for me, it's it's just about making music, you know. Um, I can't control the, the buying, you know, trends or anything like that. All I know is I love to play the guitar and I love metal music, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my best to put it out there so that people can hear it, and uh, I'll leave it up to them at that point. Well, okay, um, like I said, we've been talking to Chris Broderick from the band um, Act of Defiance. Um, I appreciate your time out of your busy schedule to talk to us um, today, Chris. Um, we're going to wrap it up now. Is there anything you'd like to say to all the fans out there before we do? No, I just want to say I hope to see you guys out on tour. You know, we're on tour with Armored Saint up through uh, the 22nd in the U.S. Um, and then we head over to Europe from the 27th through the, like, 14th of August and then we'll be back on three West Coast dates uh, Las Vegas and two in LA uh, and on the like the 16th, 17th and 18th of August and hope to see you guys there and then after Thanks that for all the support. and then after that Chris um, any any talk that you guys might do like a headlining tour or would you rather get on a, another like um, kind of bigger tour opening for somebody yeah I think our, I think we really want to get on opening slots that's that's our big deal, but you know we're not adverse to doing headlining tours. We've definitely done many of them in the past, and there's definitely talk of some stuff like that in the fall. Well, okay, well, um, you take care, Chris, and um, please keep in touch. I'll, um, I'll be sure to let Liz know once this interview gets posted. Maybe we can do it again down the line, but um, thanks for talking to us today, and um, take care of yourself, okay? Thanks, man. Okay, bye-bye.